Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, but let's get into it. How do you stop from falling off the wagon during the holidays and not gaining a bunch of weight? Welcome everyone to my very humble channel. Let's get into this conversation about not falling off the wagon because every year, and I've been coaching for years and years and years now, people fall off the wagon during the holidays with Christmas dinners and New Year's drinking. Is it worth it? Hell no. It is not worth it because it takes so long to get back into ketosis or to reestablish homeostasis in the body. Because I coach so many people, I really understand this concept of a puppy coming up here to bug me. Here he comes. Here he comes. You coming? Come on. <laughs> this is how it goes when you're doing videos. And he's getting bigger. My little chocolate lab. I know. All right, let's try this. Take 20,000. Now, it's very easy to fall off the wagon. I've never understood this concept of I've got to go on a cruise or it's my birthday, so I'm going to start being healthy after that. No. The best time to be healthy or to start your nutritional or lifestyle plan is right away. Rip the band-aid off immediately and get popping. The reason why I say this is because people who try to do it over, let's say, 10 days or two weeks or when they're back from a vacation, the retention rate is pretty low. I'd say like 2%. If you guys can survive these holiday dinners and drinking, you're pretty much going to be set probably forever after that, because I do think that special events and holidays are the worst for people who are struggling with all of their inflammation or their blood sugar or their weight. So first thing you have to do is bring your own food to the holiday parties or request food without sugar, no sauces, Make sure that whatever you eat is plain. Now, years ago, I went to Thanksgiving dinner and the only thing that didn't have a sauce was turkey and asparagus. So I had turkey and asparagus. There was no fat. And a girl, she walks up to me and she says, oh my God, are you on a special diet? And I said, yeah. And actually it was that dinner I decided to never lie again because then she's like, well, what diet are you on? Well, you know, how do you do the diet? She's thinking like diet as in weight loss diet. And we know that I don't do that. Clearly there are a few things you can really do, which is obviously bring your own food. It's not that big of a deal. Or again, you request certain food but really, the best way to avoid falling off the wagon is eat before you go to a dinner. Like eat a full meal and then bring fat with you. If you don't have a gallbladder issue, eating fat, you could put some cinnamon or some cacao butter, which is the white chocolate, melt it with your butter, whip it up, add a little dink of salt, kind of like a fat bomb. And eat this fat bombish thingy. Eat it on the way there because you need a gallbladder and lipase and chloric acid to break down that fat. And while your body is breaking down the fat, you're not hungry. Now, years ago, I used to push Gymnema. Sylvestra. And this herb still works to date if you're trying to be like, okay, I'll have some of the Christmas dinner, but I'm not doing the pies and the cakes and the desserts. So Gymnema 
it comes in a capsule typically, what you can actually do is break it open and dab it all over your tongue. And it makes food taste like donkey a-hole. Or it makes sweets taste really like... It, it just the taste is just not there. So the more you try to eat the dessert, the worse it tastes when you're taking high doses of gymnema sylvestra. And you only really you can take it orally, but what's really amazing about this herb is just put it on the end of these your tongue. are my top suggestions on how not to fall off the wagon. But what I really want to stress, you guys, is it's not worth it. A couple of minutes of pleasure and then it can take you a week or two to get back into ketosis with just one bite of a dessert or drinking alcohol for a night. But if you actually abstain from these foods or bring your own or eat before, the sense of pride or the sense of self-happiness self-accomplishment it is so high in how you feel and what is it things that wire together fire together things that fire together wired together the neocortex is creating connections so when the reward centers of your brain from accomplishing a goal keeps you on that path of fixing your body a lot of you, today I had a woman who had everything, leaky gut, gallbladder, thyroid, constipation. And she did a consultation with me on a treadmill, which seems super innocent. But for me, it was a bit of frenetic kind of energy. Like you need to focus, cr create a quiet zone and let's connect and she realized it in the end because once the light bulb goes off, because I said to her, all these things can get fixed. And her response was, you think so? And I'm like, of course, but you have to do everything. You can't do 98% and expect 100% results. It's either you do it or you don't do it. You either go for it or you don't go for it, but you can't peekaboo like, oh, I'm going to do keto this week. There's no such thing as targeted ketogenic diets or cyclic ketogenic diets because it takes so long to develop the enzymes to break down the fat and make ketones to get into the Krebs cycle or pass the blood brain barrier. This is not an easy process. So anytime you're stressed, anytime you don't sleep well, obviously when your protein's too high and your fat is too low, you don't get into ketosis. And this puts a stress and a strain on the cortisol pathway of your adrenals and your thyroid and your reproductive hormones and your gut. It's not worth it. A lot of you guys are walking around with hypoglycemia. You eat something or reactive hypoglycemia or postprandial hypoglycemia where in the afternoon you're crashing a little bit because you cannot stabilize your blood sugar. Drinking makes you hypoglycemic incredibly. So even though you test your blood sugar and it's like 60, that's bad. That's really bad because what goes down goes up and then it's a bouncing effect of your blood sugar. This is not worth it. Things that fire in your actions will wire and create a key into a lock that gets stuck. And all you want to do is keep that pattern of falling off the wagon. I don't think it's worth it. No one, no one or no stress can ever, there is no single individual or situational thing that will ever get me to feel bad for my healthy choices. Some people say comments like, oh, I know I'm so boring because I don't do this. And I'm like, no, you're not boring. You're exceptional. You're amazing. You're vibrant. Your light shines bright. You vibrate higher than most people when you understand who you are and your purpose to live as a creature, as a being, as a human being, to, to strive to live with optimal health, not band-aid, chronic fatigue, uh, brain fog, food addicted, binging, craving sugar and carbs all the time or salty crunchy. 
that's slavery. You don't want to feel like a slave to your food, to your diet. So eat before, eat a full meal, eat your huge amount of protein. Now eat a big meal before you go to these dinners. And when it comes to New Year's Eve, do your apple cider vinegar shots and don't let anybody know there's no alcohol in it because once the blood sugar starts to bounce, so does your hormones, so does your fat gain, so does your thyroid. Everything tanks because you have a hard time being disciplined and sticking to something, right? Believe in something or fall for anything. It's not time to start later. It's time to start now. You have to be strong like a warrior and you have to treat your body like you're training for the Olympics. And that is a kind of reward that most people don't get a chance to experience because they give in to societal pressures for a few minutes of pleasure and a lifetime of problems. Tomorrow, I will be cooking a Christmas dinner for my mother. And the sad thing is, is that she fell off the ketogenic diet years ago. So people ask me, how's your mother now? And I'm like, she's very lucky to be alive. But the health issues she has created from falling off the wagon over and over and then permanently off the wagon, the quality of life is just not there. Even though she's still alive and kicking, she's got all of these issues like swelling and and lymphedema and can't sleep and a barrage. Let's just say a barrage of issues, nothing that's life-threatening, but the quality of life is really low because she didn't stick to the plan. A good plan. Comment below if you feel that you're going to struggle or if you feel like you're going to stay strong through the holidays, through Christmas dinners and New Year's because New Year's is a time where you really, really should be like enough nonsense. It's time to take control of your health. It's like today, not next week, today. Just start right now. And if you fall off the wagon, start over and get back on the horse. Just get back on. All right, guys. Happy holidays. And hit the notification bell. Subscribe. If you need a consultation, go to stephanieperson.com. My Instagram is Stephanie Ketogenic. My Facebook fan page is Stephanie the Business Person. I have a course where I cover all three diets because not one all diet fits one person. Like not everybody can do carnivore. Not everybody can do carbs. It's so interesting that some people can do carbs and some people just can't. Their blood sugar is too wacky. And then some people can't do strict carnivore. So three And find the one. And you can oscillate between the three as you're graduating into ketosis land. And challenge signups should be in January. They will be. I'm almost done. And it's awesome. I've been working so hard on this challenge. Plus my business. Plus the animals. Plus the house. And yeah, I'm going to do Steph's story time. Especially with my horse. Because a lot have been going on with him. He's had to go to the vet for particular reasons. And when he is completely healed from a surgery he just had, I'm going to talk about it. 